and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Elena and today I wanted to talk to you about if you have been recently diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, what that means, some of the things that I learned. So I've lived with it for about 10 years now. Yeah, I just wanted to make this video to kind of put you at ease, answer some of the most common questions, hopefully make you feel like it's not the end of the world. Um, it can be traumatic for sure, but it's not. Um, I'm here to tell you that you can live a great life with AS. So if you're new here, please hit subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up if you do like it. That will help uh, other people find it as well that might need it. So you're doing um, other people a favor and you're also helping me out. So thank you so much. All right, so I have recently been diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. Now what? AS diagnosis can be, like I said, it can be quite traumatic, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world or the end of life as you know it. It might take a little bit of extra work on your part, but I do believe that if you are, if you are willing to do the work and really start to take care of your body and yourself, you can really you can really live a perfectly full life with AS, right? We might deal with a lot of a lot of things with it, but um, but I think that it doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be the end of the world. So number one, my biggest tip if you've recently been diagnosed is keep moving. So if you are an athlete or you have a regular kind of movement practice already, uh, keep that up. Um, if you might have to adjust the way you move, which is perfectly fine and perfectly normal. So when I was diagnosed about 10 or 11 years ago, I was a long distance runner. For me personally, I had to give that up because it did not feel good in my body. However, I know other people with AS who are professional skiers, they still run and do all that kind of stuff. So listen to your body. No one can tell you what, what works for you except you, right? So if you are into high impact kinds of sports and you feel like you can continue with it, it's important that you keep moving anyway. So just switch to something else. So for me, I switched from long distance running to, you know, we have a Peloton, I do Pilates, I do bar, I do a lot of walking. Um, so just, I also do handstands and all kinds of other um, fun kind of weird things. But um, so just, you might have to just adjust how you move. Now, if you are completely sedentary, you're gonna wanna start with a movement practice. So I would recommend something very gentle at first and kind of work progressively so that you don't overwhelm your body. So um, walking, biking, um, stretching and mobility work is gonna be really important as well as strength training. So whether that is Pilates and bar or if it's weightlifting, uh, that is great as well. Um, I have found that the key for me personally is to have a mix of strength and flexibility. So I am naturally a pretty weak person. Um, so I have to work really hard on my strength. And then I'm also, because of the AS, I think I'm just stiff as a board usually. And I have to constantly work on my mobility and stretch. And I've worked on my mobility every single day for the past four years now, and it's getting better, but it's, it's slow. Uh, and it's slow in general to get more flexible, but especially when you have something like ankylosing spondylitis that actually makes you stiffer, it's even harder. So it takes work, but it's fully possible. And I can tell you when I was at my worst, probably seven years ago, I was, I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't pick stuff up from the floor. I couldn't sit on the couch. I'm sitting on the couch now, cross-legged. That was unheard of just like even two years ago for me. So like basic things for me used to be so difficult. I was in so much pain. I could barely function. I could barely go to work. I, it was just horrendous. I, I couldn't move. I was like, I was, it, it sounds funny, but I was like a refrigerator. I couldn't lift my leg up past 45 degrees. I couldn't, I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand for long periods of time. It was horrible. However, I started being really diligent with my gentle strength and then mobility work. And it, I feel so much better. Like I'm sitting here cross-legged on the couch, which again, just a few years ago, I could have never been 
sitting on the couch even. I had to lay flat on here. It was really, really bad. So I just want, I'm telling you that to give you hope. Like if you currently are feeling like you're like this, if you work on it consistently over time, your body will open up. Okay. So there is hope. But yeah, so number one, my biggest piece of advice, if you've newly, if you've recently been diagnosed, is keep your body moving, however feels good for you, okay? So find something that feels good that you can stick with, and also something that incorporates strength and flexibility. Number two, drink a lot of water. This is a pretty simple one. And for me, so I actually have this nifty little thing. It's a, um, I don't know if you can see, it's like bigger than my head. It's a gallon water bottle. So I aim to drink one of these every single day. And it just really helps me stay hydrated. It, uh, staying hydrated can help with inflammation. So I'd highly recommend getting more water if you're not already drinking a lot and of course during the summer and if you're an athlete you know you have to drink even more so if you can tolerate drinking a gallon half a gallon would be fine as well i'm sure but i feel really good from one gallon so um that would be my second tip which is a very simple thing you can do right it's all about just taking care of your body in the best possible way exercise keep moving and then uh, water so far. So number three is on that same line, nutrition. Now nutrition is really, really, really big when it, came, when it comes to ankylosing spondylitis. And unfortunately there's no one size fits all. So I had on some of my other videos, I have a lot of, um, I get a lot of comments about nutrition and questions and stuff on it. And it's honestly, it kind of depends. It's a very individual thing. It's not a one size fits all. And so I know people that have really good results with just cutting out carbs completely, right? So no starch, uh, a no starch uh, diet. Um, so no rice, no pasta, no bread, just vegetables and, and, um, and meat, uh, basically. Then I know people that have great results with Mediterranean diet, which tends to be quite anti-inflammatory. So you'd eat a lot of uh, vegetables and a lot of fish and seafood, avocados, nuts, things like that. The occasional glass of red wine. Um, then other people have great success with carnivore diet, which is you only eat meat. And then other people have success with a vegan diet where you don't eat any meat or animal products. So it really depends. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be to try to keep a food diary and see how you feel. And do you feel a spike in symptoms after a few days of eating, I don't know, whatever. Um, and, and just try to keep track of it that way. For me, food, like I try to eat fairly healthy. Um, I eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of whole grains. Um, I eat um, yogurt, I eat lean meats, and uh, I do eat rice and pasta and bread. I tend to make a lot of bread, and it doesn't really bother me. I eat candy uh, maybe once, twice a week, um, which isn't great, but I also don't want to, I'm not willing to give that up, right? So that's my one vice. I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. I just but my candy, I, I don't want to give up my candy, right? So maybe you have something like that too, but just kind of try to see how you feel when you eat a certain way. And there, just know that there's no, there's no one size fits all with this. However, I can almost guarantee you that, you know, fast food, processed foods, that's not going to be great, right? So you might want to just try to at least eat as clean as possible, you know, cook more food versus going out um, and try to eat like whole foods. Just, just try to eat as little processed foods as possible. So eat a lot of fresh foods and try to cook it yourself to the best of your ability. And number four is, I mentioned this in one of my other videos and it was a very popular topic, but stay off the forums. So I know when you've been recently diagnosed, you, you dive into everything you can find on Google. You tend to join all these like communities and all these forums. And the, the, the problem with these places online 
is that oftentimes, more often than not, they're very, very negative places. People go there to complain and they go there to become a victim and to get, um, get uh, validated in their victim mentality, if that makes sense. And when you, have a, when you have a chronic illness, when you have something like AS, you can actually make yourself sicker. You can increase your pain by focusing on it, right? And so by being in these forums and you get these notifications and people write in there and, oh, has anyone, uh, you know, now I've tried three different medications and none of them are working. And has anyone else had this problem? And I'm in so much pain. That doesn't help me at all, <laughs> you know? Like, I know that it's, of course, it's important that you have, like, community and, and not to, you know, ignore your symptoms and not talk about it. But be very careful with these forums because it becomes, like, um, uh, it becomes part of who you are. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you identify with your disease and you really, you kind of look for these things. Oh, what's hurting today? And what's, oh, uh, woe is me, kind of. It's, it's a very negative uh, space to be in um, psychologically, and you have to really watch your mind, right? You have to watch the content that you consume uh, in general, but also, you know, if you sit and watch the news 24-7, you're going to become depressed. And it's the same thing when you deal with a disease like AS. You, if, you, if you constantly sit there and and just take in all this information about how sick people are and how horrible this disease is and, and how, how many things you can't do and how bad you're feeling and all these things. It just, it's, you're not gonna feel any better is my point. So just be very mindful of that. So try to find positive channels. If you, if you really wanna watch or, or, you know, be, be part of something like that. Find someone who is actually positive about it and has more of a can-do attitude versus this thing with, with um, <laughs> just talking about how sick they are and how awful it is. And yeah, it's a fine line. You want to have community and you want to be around like-minded people, but you do not want to be dragged down by, by, the, by the, victim, uh, the victim squad. Just keep that in mind, especially when you've been recently diagnosed, because it can make you sicker really, really quickly. So uh, not that positive thinking is, is uh, you know, a, a cure for anything, but it, it certainly doesn't hurt you to try to have a positive mindset about things and focus on the things that you can do and not the things that you can't do. All right, number five is do not be afraid of medication. So I know a lot of you when you are rec when you become when you get your diagnosis uh, the doctors are going to offer you biologics and you get terrified and you don't want to take it and you're so confused and they tell you that you have to stay on it for the rest of your life and if you don't get on it right now you might have irreversible joint damage and it's all very very terrifying so the same thing happened to me. I didn't get on medication for three years after my diagnosis. And that was, around, yeah, so I was diagnosed about 10 years ago. At, so seven years ago, I was, like I said earlier, I was in such bad shape. I couldn't move. I felt like I was in a straitjacket. It was horrendous. I had no mobility. I couldn't move. And I was like 30 two, 31 at the time. I don't even know. I was very young. And um, at that point, when I was at my absolute worst, I finally agreed to get the medication. And I stayed on, so I took Humira, which is a biologic, and I was only on it. I told my rheumatologist, I was like, I do not want to take this for the rest of my life. Um, I only want to be on it for a short period of time, and I just want to see if it helps. And he actually, so there was a different uh, rheumatologist than the, than, the, uh, than the doctor who diagnosed me. And she was very, you know, it was the scare tactics that you have to start this now. You're going to stay on it for the rest of your life. You're going to be, you know, you're going to have irreversible joint damage. The whole spiel, which just really put me off. So anyway, I switched rheumatologists and he was, oh, he's amazing. And so he was like, let's try it. You can stay on it for six months and then get off of it if you feel better. So that's what I did. So... After three years of struggling on my own and refusing to take medication, I finally got on it. And you know what? After like two weeks, I felt so much better. And then, of course, I kept doing my exercises and all that kind of stuff. But the combination 
really, really, really worked incredibly well. So I want to tell you, do not be afraid of the medications. I, of course, also don't just jump in and, you know, take whatever they tell you. Be, you know, be, have some discernment and feel what's right for you. But my point is, if you are at a point where you can barely move, you can't lift your leg past 45 degrees, you can't even sit on the couch, you have to lay flat on the couch. Um, you, you, I even had a hard time sleeping in a bed. I slept on the floor for a long time because my, my spine couldn't handle being in like, uh, I had to lay on a flat surface. Uh, but anyway, medication is there for a reason and it's a wonderful medication. I know it's scary. It has a lot of horrible side effects with cancer and all kinds of crazy things. But the thing is, it helps you. It can help you. And you don't... <sighs> I mean, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. So just going to throw that out there. I say it in every video. Talk to your doctor. They, you have to make this decision with them. But just my experience is that the medication, you don't have to take the medication for the rest of your life. At least for me, it worked. It works great to get off and on and off of it as needed. I've been on it two times in 10 years. Um, and both times were only for like five to six months. So... But I guess my point is just don't be afraid of the medication. If you feel like you're doing well without the medication, don't be on it. But if you feel like you cannot function, get on the medication. Okay? So that is one thing that I just wanted to mention because I wish somebody would have kind of, I don't know, told me that versus that doctor that just told me like it was such a doomsday thing and it just scared me so much. Um, so I'm just here to tell you that the medication is there to help you. Um, if your rheumatologist is really pushy, just maybe get a new one. Uh, I know it's also a very expensive medication and I think that they make money off of it, the doctors when they prescribe it. So I, I'm not sure, but I, anyway, just have some discernment, see if it's right for you, but just know, you know, don't jump on it the first thing you do necessarily, but if you need it, it's there. So that's just my two cents. Again, I'm not a doctor, so do whatever is best for you, but just wanted to mention that. All right, and then last but not least, minimize your stress. This is a really tricky one because if you have kids, if you have a full-time job, like life can get crazy, you have, you know, a mortgage, all kinds of things, uh, and you're sick, right? It can be very, very stressful, but minimizing stress uh, can help reduce inflammation. So that would be like, if you are flaring really bad, if you're super inflamed and you were just diagnosed, one of my biggest tips is to try to reduce your stress levels however you can. I don't know, take a few days off, go on vacation, stay on the couch a whole day, just read, watch movies, whatever it is, just really find ways to calm down your nervous system because when our nervous system is in this fight or flight mode, our inflammation goes through the roof and that is what causes your, your pain, right? And your, your, all your issues. And so minimizing the stress will reduce the inflammation. And so I, yeah, whatever you can do to, to minimize your stress, um, you know, go to bed earlier, get up earlier, have a, you know, make sure that you have slower mornings if possible. If you have to get your kids ready for school in the morning, get up 30 minutes earlier so you can have your coffee in peace or, you know, whatever you need to do, like stay off your phone for the first hour before you wake or uh, after you wake up and just try to, yeah, try to do what you can to really just kind of calm yourself down in these situations because it will, the, the stress will um, exacerbate the, um, uh, the inflammation, which we don't want. I hope this was helpful and just, I want to just, there's so many stories out there that are so negative, right? And I want to be your, I don't know, I want to be your friend that tells you that everything is going to be okay. Because it is. Um, it, it just takes a little bit of work on your part, but it is fully possible to live an amazing life. So I had to give up long distance running, right? Which was really, really difficult. And actually, that's one more thing I want to mention is that if you, like grieving is okay because if you are diagnosed and especially if you're you're an athlete um like I was a long distance runner I had to give up my running 
it's that's 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 really really hard right it's really difficult it's really jarring um and traumatic and grieving is kind of part of the process so if that's you i want you to know that that's normal i want to encourage you to take a few days take a week whatever it is let yourself just wallow in it and just be sad and scream into a pillow and do whatever you need to do right but then pick yourself back up and put on that can-do attitude and get to work because grieving is is it's normal but we have to be very careful again here comes those online forums and everything um if you're newly diagnosed you have kind of a you're you're kind of at this fork in the road right so you can take the 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 positive i got this i'm gonna figure this out road or you can take the oh no my life is over oh i'm so sick oh i'm so ill i feel so sorry for myself i can't do it road right and sometimes we switch in between them and that's fine but you want to mainly stay on this positive road right so i just want to encourage you that even if it feels impossible right now or it feels really sad and you know maybe you're like me and you're a long distance runner and it doesn't it feels horrible in your body um just know that there are other things you can start doing that will bring you just as much joy eventually so for me i started doing like i said pilates bar like low impact strengthening uh and stretching things right and then i actually a few years ago i got into handstands and contortion and all kinds of these really crazy things i never thought it was possible for me to stand on my hands uh especially with AS but it is and so that's my new challenge is standing on my hands instead of instead of running uh uh half marathons and marathons and so if you're going through that right now the grieving part just know it's normal give yourself a few days or a week or how, how, however long you need and then just pull yourself together and get on with it right so do the work focus on supporting your body in every way you can right so keep moving drink a lot of water stay hydrated eat nutritious foods try and see what works for you but overall like skip the junk food right like the french fries the mcdonald's the whatever chick-fil-a like all of that just try to cook more try to eat healthier and um you know get enough sleep rest um try to minimize your stress to the best of your ability stay off the online forums try to feed your mind positive things and people with AS that do good things like instead of just sitting at home complaining about how sick they are right and uh yeah if you have any questions drop them below uh and you can find me on Instagram as well elena from sweden uh and if you again if you're new to my channel please hit hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and um yeah i just want to send so much love to you if you've recently been diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis and i know what you're going through you are not alone and i hope that you I hope this video gives you give you gives you some hope and some joy and some can do attitude and uh yeah if you have any questions at all just um I'm just a comment away. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.